I'm Cindy Ball. I am the program manager at Oculus um, for Oculus Education. Uh, that's a fairly new group. I've been with Oculus for just over three months right now, so we are, we're just getting started. Um, I'm really happy today to share with you a few things that Oculus is doing other than games. So the Oculus mission, just overall, is to enable people to experience anything, anywhere with anyone. Um, and that is a very powerful message, and I think it's going to be a very powerful message for learning and education. Thank you. So this, these are the two devices we have in market currently, our mobile device uh, with the Gear VR and our Oculus Rift, which is our tethered PC experience. And then we also have the touch hand controllers as well. So from an education perspective, we want to build on the overall Oculus mission. And we and I, what I'm focusing on right now is really trying to understand what happens when VR gets involved in the learning process. And secondarily, we also are very interested in making sure that there is equitable access to the VR equipment as we're very early on in the uh, VR cycle. And we're, we're doing what we can to try to make this equipment available to uh, a wide range of communities. So one of our programs is VR for Good. And so Oculus is putting a fair amount of resources behind um, social good and philanthropic efforts. Uh, the 360 film, Filmmakers program was a, a project last year where we paired up 360 filmmakers with nonprofits to help, te to help tell the stories of those nonprofits in very immersive ways in very compelling ways. So we had, uh, I think, 11 partnerships. And of those, I believe nine of them made it into major film festivals. So South by Southwest, Sundance, Tribeca. Uh, so it was, a, it was a very successful campaign. Um, so there was a really interesting, a wide variety of, of um, different groups that were participating. Another effort for VR for Good is going down to the high school level and providing mentorship and equipment to high school students to help them tell their very personal stories in their own neighborhoods. TechStart is an initiative through Facebook in which we are bringing VR into high school classrooms, particularly around CS education, computer science education. So we've launched 250 schools in Arkansas with RIFs and some CS curriculum and working in partnership with, with that state um, school district. DevLab was a project in partnership with Kaleidoscope where 40 um, digital artists were brought in and really asked to explore the boundaries of what VR and art could mean. So unfortunately, this was before I joined. I, I, I've seen some of them online. Um, I'm sure that was a fabulous experience. And the next gen is a, a program that we have with several universities. This is our first year implementing this project, um, where again, we provided some equipment, some mentorship, um, some guidance to several of these universities. And they took, they took the equipment throughout the year and developed um, applications, films, it really it had a lot of involvement from the students. Okay, so we're also, we're also looking at, um, we're working with several um, medical applications as well. So for us, learning is, it's a very broad definition, not just academics, it's, it's training, professional training, building empathy. So it's a, it's a very wide definition and we're looking at a lot of different angles. So this is a project by Stanford where they developed a, a virtual heart and the heart surgeon could actually scan the patient's real heart before surgery, and then they, can, they could evaluate it and make, make plans going inside the heart and, and actually make plans for what the surgical procedure would be. So that's uh, it's very fascinating. At the LA Children's Hospital, uh, there is a program for just-in-time training. So if you have a pediatric emergency, a lot of doctors haven't experienced that in the emergency room, maybe since med school. And so there's a curriculum that's being developed that uh, if uh, uh, um, doctors in the, emer in the emergency room 
could actually quickly review a particular procedure on something they hadn't experienced for a while and get that just-in-time training. Oculus has a store, and you can buy applications. Um, we, have, we have put up $10 million for educational content development um, this year. So I think we've probably gone through about half that budget so far with projects. There's, there's still um, some money to be had, I believe. So uh, we are looking for ideas that fit into the store primarily, which means it's general, more general interest content. So this was a, a piece, a mission ISS. You can go and experience the International Space Station. And it's pretty compelling, a little claustrophobic, um, but it's, there's footage from NASA. It's, uh, it's a really a great experience. So just a few other um, of the titles we have. We have education. We have an educational section in the, uh, in the store for the Gear VR. Uh, fewer educational titles for the Rift. But there is, there, we're really starting to, um, to put together a pretty interesting library. And then I always want to focus on some of the creator tools. So uh, we have Medium, which is our sculpting tool, and Quill, which is an illustration tool. And so it's, uh, it's really interesting to see what people are, are doing with those tools. Okay, so as of today, I want to make an announcement that um, we have had, we've made a partnership with the California State Library to bring 100 RIFs into uh, California public libraries. So we are um, just excited about the fact that, again, to make sure there's access to the equipment, we already see that there's, every in industry is being transformed by this technology. And it's really important that everybody has an equal chance to be exposed to, be inspired, be empowered, by using this equipment very early on. So this is a map of uh, where these libraries are. Uh, we are going to have the first library rollout next week, and it'll probably be a couple months before um, these rifts are deployed throughout the state. Okay, so my role is, is uh, to help with all those programs, but also to focus on some research side of all of this. And the question is, how can VR and AR, of course, uh, impact learning. Um, Oculus has VR equipment now. We've announced that we are also working on AR. So we are definitely looking ahead. So we're looking at research that has already been um, done. People have been researching VR for 50 years. But you know everything has changed over those 50 years. So we are partnering with researchers who are uh, doing data-driven studies in how VR can impact learning and we're providing support and, and starting to build some of those relationships. We're interested in not only how can you learn a particular subject matter or a particular um, kind of knowledge area, but also in the implementation of bringing these programs into uh, public spaces or um, any place really at scale. So the California Library is a really interesting experiment where we put these devices, and I think it'll be in 90 libraries. So there's a lot of operational um, issues that we'll be learning about. And then yes, we're, we're looking for data-driven research to support. And as we get a little bit of good information in these early studies, we're hoping that that will enable the research groups to go on and raise more money and to expand those programs in the right areas. Okay, so, you know, uh, we all have this instinctive feeling that VR and AR is, it will be good for learning. Somehow there'll be positive uh, things that will come. We know that VR has some superpowers. You're, you can be anywhere, you're totally immersed. You're, you're embodied, your, mod, your body is moving, you learn. Um, you can see things at different scales. There's, you know, there's just a lot of things you kind of intuitively know. The social collaborative space will be very powerful. We're in very early days. Facebook Spaces is uh, you know, an early experience, but it is surprisingly compelling to be standing next to someone else's avatar uh, when they're across the country. And then AR, of course, has a different set of superpowers. The real world is, is right there. Um, you have the same embodied learning. You also can visualize things in many ways. You have the in-person collaboration, and then obviously people are working on the remote collaboration as well. So I think you know, for learning, we have a lot to learn, but 
I think the uh, individual scenarios, the individual learning experiences, not, not like a whole curriculum across the school year, but very specific learning scenarios, you have to really just focus on that holistically. <coughs> and so as we are looking at VR, uh, we hope to understand that well, help that inform what we might look at in the AR space as well. And really, uh, you know, my hypothesis is that depending on what you're going to learn, AR or VR is, or a combination, you know, is, is going to be what we need. Okay, so that's my talk. Um, if anybody has anything interesting they're doing in the, in the learning space, I would love to talk to you. And thank you so much for having me.